Hey all and welcome back to another episode of Let's Learn Circuits. In today's video I'm going to speak about a voltage regulator. So a voltage regulator is basically taking input voltage of a certain value, uh, in case 5 volts, and makes it into a constant voltage of a different voltage of let's say 3.3 volts. So these are quite handy when I've got a different input voltage, but I need a different voltage for a device on my board like the esp32 needs 3v3 but let's say i've got a battery and my battery is 4 volts i cannot connect the battery to my esp32 so i need to regulate the voltage so that's what we speak about today um, what is a voltage regulator what to look out for when you choose a voltage regulator and then put it on the pcb like we do and what type of routing we should do so if this is something you want to learn more about uh, just keep watching if you find this video is helpful, please hit that like and subscribe button. It's really appreciated. Uh, so let's get starting in starting. Let's get started in explanation. Explanating. <laughs> let's go, guys. So this is an example of a voltage regulator. You get many different voltage regulators, but one I use quite regularly is the MIC or MIC 5219. So this is a voltage regulator of a constant 3 volt 3, 3.3 volt output and I can put a voltage of between 3.7 to 5 volts as the input. We will look at the data sheet later in this video. So basically what it does is it takes my VBAT, which is a 4.2 to 3.7 volt input, and then does its magic inside and gives me a 3 volt 3 output. So as you can see, it's a quite simple IC. I just need an input, and it gives me output with the ground. So you can see different pins here. So the pin number two, the N, as it states, it's the input of the voltage. And then you can see this enable pin. This enable pin, a lot of voltage regulator has enable pins that you can connect to a microcontroller perhaps, and you can control if the voltage voltage is on or off. So if I toggle high, I'll get my 3B3 on out. When I toggle low, it switches it off. So in this example, I just connect it to my input voltage. So when I have a VBAT connected, the IC will always be on. Uh, so if you can have many different voltage regulators in a circuit and then you can control it with the IC by toggling this pin. And as you can see, when we have an IC, we always have decoupling caps. So these decoupling cap capacitors is just to make sure that my input and output voltage is smooth. What I mean by that is a capacitor is like, you can see, a small battery. It stores a charge. So when I connect my 4.2 volts here, the capacitor will charge and keep that 4.2 volts for a time even when I take my VBAT away. So depending on how big the capacitor is, depends how quickly it drains. Sometimes when you switch off appliances at your house, you still see that LED burn. Those are capacitors keeping the charge. So it's the same principle. So let's say my 3.7 to 4.2 voltage drops a bit lower that for a second or a millisecond then my capacitor will make sure that I still have the 3.7 volts here and the same on the side. So if my 3 volt 3 toggles between 3.1, 3.3, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, then my capacitors will make sure that I've got a constant voltage here because it keeps some of the charge of the battery. So now that we understand the basics of a voltage regulator, that it takes input voltage, does some magic inside and gives me a different voltage on the output, spoke about the, the coupling capacitors that will keep the charge, now let's look at the data sheet to learn some terms you need to know for voltage regulators. So this is the data sheet for my MIC521. So the MIC521 is an LDO regulator. That's quite important. So LDO is just low dropout regulator. What that means is linear regulators always is a volt drop required to work. So for example, if I want 3.3 volts on the output, my input has to be more than the volt drop across the, the the regulator that it means so let's say my volt drop is one volt i need to give at least 4.3 volts on the input of my regulator to get 3.3 volts out so it cannot be close so ldo is a regulator that can have that value quite close to one another without being issue so to have 3.3 volts out i can maybe have a 3.5 volts input so i don't need that voltage difference from the input and output that is what meant by ldo low dropout and here you can see in data sheets, they normally give you typical application sheets. So there you can see my VN is 4 volts and VR is 3.3 volts. 
they also tell you the decoupling capacitors and things like that when you look at the ratings the operating ratings the maximum things like this is important as well so you can see the supply input is 2.4 volts to 12 volts so that is quite a big range so if i put 2.5 volts to 12 volts i'll get about 3.3 volts out that's the idea you can see the output current that's also another important thing to look at what is the maximum output current that this ic can give it's about 500 milliamps so if i've got a load that i want to that's 3.3 volts but it needs more than 500 milliamps this ic will not work and you will burn the ic so that's important to take note of now let's look at this 12 volts that is a big input voltage to get 3.3 volts out so what you have to be careful for when taking such a big voltage to a low voltage is the volt drop we spoke about so if i go with 12 volts minus 3.3 volts i'll get uh, let's do it 8.7 volts across my voltage regulator times by the current you'll get the power that's across that regulator and that's quite a lot so that can actually burn your ic you either they need a heat sink or some sort of way to keep it cool you'll see a lot of voltage regulators the bigger the difference between the input and output the more heat sink you need the the power needs to go somewhere and it goes with respect to heat so that's important so that's a that's it about the data sheet so things to look out for is what current can get output so this one can output 500 milliamps so i do not want a load that needs more than 500 milliamps it will burn the chip and then you have to look at the drop so the volt drop across the ic so this one is low it's 500 milliamps that means if i want 3.3 volts out i at least need to give it 3.8 volts so i need to give it that bit extra and then another thing just to be careful is when taking a high voltage like 12 volts to 3.3 volts that voltage different can cause a lot of heat on the ic so just keep that in mind make sure you got nice nice heat sinks this 12 volts can be a lot just the difference is very important guys but that is all you need to know for now uh, just to understand how all it works so let's take our schematic to our pcb but when you look at this data sheet as well uh, the drop out the ldo is not constant so you can see on the left hand side it might actually be as low as 10 millivolts at a light load but then at full load so at 500 milliamps it will have a volt drop of 500 milliwatt many volts not watts so that's also to keep in mind so if i'm not running at full load i can get away with 10 millivolt drop out and that is quite low you'll see other linear regulators might be up to one volt so that like i said means just means that if i need a 3.3 volts output i need to at least give it 4.3 volts input and that voltage difference is very important the bigger that difference is the more heat you'll generate now let's take it to a pcb so all we do is tools update pcb from schematic like you guys know wait a while and we update the pcb then all my components will be on you so as you can see it's a very small ic for such a to change the voltage um, this ic also has different footprints so you got this one and you can see in the data sheet you have a sot 23 if i'm mistaken yeah sot 235 so you get two different footprints just keep that in mind you've got the msop 8 and the sot 23 and you got the other ones but these are more easier to solder by hand now all you have to do is actually just make sure that your decoupling capacitors are as close as possible that's all so it's not really that crazy to do root um, nothing very serious it's not high current 500 milliamps so you don't need to worry too much about your track thickness but just make sure these decoupling capacitors are as close as possible to this ic so you just make it pretty so you can see i've got my ground and my three volts my v bad three ground and then we just can root it nothing serious just nice and easy my ground i normally have a ground plane so i normally just have bias so that's how i typically will just do this voltage regulator you can see uh, this is pin 4 is normally the output 3v3 now i'm lying to you pin 3 is the output 3v3 <laughs> pin 4 is a bypass and that's it so you got your input which is my vbat and then you've got your output 3v3 
and then you'll take this to your ESP or wherever you want to go. You just take this 3V supply and supply something else that needs 3V3. Guys, I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions about this. Um, so just remember voltage regulators, think about the bolt drop across it. How much current can this regulator give me? Is my load too current hungry? Is 500 milliamps fine? And then just make sure when you've got a big volt drop between your input and output, so if you want to make 12 volts or 3.3 volts, just be careful, you will generate some heat. Uh, to keep that in mind. Guys, if this was helpful, please like, subscribe, and have a great day further. Bye.